In a previous video, we looked at using Teledisk to create bootable floppies for my K-Pro 2. Uh, I was able to find uh, some VH or some uh, TD0 files uh, on the web that had various CPM images for the K-Pro 2, and in that set that I downloaded, we actually found one that would boot on my particular machine, you know, ROM version, those kind of things. And so after getting that machine booted, I went ahead and formatted some blank uh, floppies on it, single-sided, double density, with just CPM boot on it. Uh, and now I'm going to look to move some files onto those floppies. So some of the stuff I downloaded were zip files. A couple of those zip files contain diagnostic software. So rather than being uh, floppy images, they were actually just a group of files. So if I go into the K2 Diag folder here, And a zip was this set of files here that are diagnostics uh, for the K-Pro 2. And so what I need to do is, is transfer these off the DOS machine here onto a, a K-Pro formatted floppy. And the utility to do that is 22disk. You can find 22disk uh, out on the web. I got it from the same place I downloaded the disk images, I believe, and the uh, Teledisk application. And I've got those uh, 22 disk files sitting on the A floppy in this machine. So it's a 1.44 meg, uh, 3.5 inch floppy. Tw uh, tw or, uh, 22 disk likes to be installed. There's a couple of reasons to go ahead and just do the install. So we'll step through the install steps here first. So I'm going to go ahead and install. The files are on the A floppy. Actually. Well, let's see. Enter the name of the destination drive for this installation followed by a colon. It's going to go to the C drive. And I'm going to put it in a, a, a directory at the root called name or name 22 disk. So, so create directory uh, C22 disk. So I have a high density floppy controller in this machine, which means I want to call it a PCAT class. Notice on here that it says even if you have an XT type system with a high density floppy, Treat it as a AT class so the system knows there's a high density floppy in it. So yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to let it automatically configure 22 disks for my diskette drives. It'll go out and query the drives and come back and say, here's what you have. A is a 1.44 meg 3.5 and, and B is, of course, a 1.2 meg 5 and a quarter. We're going to be using the B drive, obviously, to deal with the 5 and a quarter inch double density drives for the K-Pro. So there's no changes to that. It's now accessing the floppies off or the, or the files off the floppy disk and hasn't transferred them, I don't think, to the hard disk yet here, but it will. Oh well, maybe it is. So and there it is. So uh, basically says we can reinstall 22 disk if we make any configuration changes, but it, at this point we have a 22 disk installed. So I'll pull the floppy out of A, go back to the C drive, and we'll go to that install we just did. And take a look at what it installed. And we see C menu in here, which is the application we want to run for 22 disk. And it's going to ask us some questions. So the first thing we need to do is set the CPM diskette type. And I'm going to go ahead and work through the list here to find the K-Pro images. So there's all kinds of, of uh, CPM uh, machine formats it knows for how the uh, directory, etc. are written on the disks. Anyhow, we're looking for... We're going to use K-Pro... That's 2x410. We're going to use K2, which is the K-Pro 2. It's a single-sided, double-density, 48-track disk, just as it says. So we're going to pick that and say that's our target this type. Now, it's giving us a warning here it'll work best on a standard 360K drive. I'm still going to be using a 1.2 megabyte drive here. It's the same drive we used to uh, use when we used Teledisk to create the images that you know, actually booted in the machine. So, hopefully this is going to work. Uh, I want to set the, the drive that is the CPM drive, and that drive is B on my machine, the 5 and a quarter inch. And now I'm going to go ahead and copy CPM files or DOS files to the CPM. So the, the files are sitting in a DOS folder on the C drive. And I want to copy them over to uh, 
uh, the disc image. So I've got a disc here. It should be formatted single-sided. Well, it is formatted single-sided double density. I don't know actually if it's blank or not. Uh, I could have actually checked that, but I didn't. Anyhow, we're going to tell it to grab all the files from C. What did I call it? K1 Diag, I believe, is the folder. This will complain if I've got it wrong. And of course, I wanted K2 there. Uh, shoot. Well, so this is actually copying the diagnostics for the K Pro 1. I meant to get the K Pro 2, but that's fine. Because uh, I wanted to create a K Pro 1 a diagnostic disk as well. So let's see, we can do a display the CPM directory. Let's see what ended up on there. So that disk ended up with the three K Pro 1 diagnostic files on it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and just set it aside for when I get around to working on the K Pro 1 machine again. Now I, I played with 22 disk earlier, so some of these disks have. Uh, content on them. Uh, let's go ahead and do a directory. I just mounted another floppy. So that's a blank floppy at this point. There's no files on it. So let's go ahead and copy files from the DOS system. You know, option 4 to it. We're going to copy from C K2 Diag, I believe. I'm trying to remember the folder names I used here. Enter. If you specify a diskette drive, it will override the selected. I think we just take the default here. And it's copying those files off the, you know, off the C drive in that K2 Diag folder onto what should be uh, a KPRO2 formatted single-sided double density drive with uh, the CPM boot on it and nothing else. The idea, hopefully, here is that I will end up with a, uh, you know, a disk that I can run the uh, KPRO2 diagnostics from. If we display the CPM directory, we should see all the files we copied, and we do. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to go ahead and actually lay that on the top of the Capro 2. I know that floppy goes with that machine. Let's go ahead and see if I have anything on this floppy just because I'm curious. It's another blank. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and exit out here. Uh, K1 Diag. So on another A floppy disk here, let's see if this is the one. This is the one. So there was a couple other things I found in zip files, and one of them was this learning CPM a thing that apparently came with the KPRO. Uh, and this ship test, it was supposedly the ship test programs that were used on the KPRO too. So I'm going to transfer those files onto my local C drive. Oh, MD, MD ship test, and we'll use 22 disk to transfer these. Copy A colon. I'm typing around. Of course, the the, the camera mount here it makes it kind of difficult. I know you hear me complain about it all the time. It'll be interesting to see if these run and then let's copy oops should test all files to C colon shop test.
let a floppy out and let's go back to the 22 disk directory or it's C menu I've got a blank five and a quarter inch floppy in the drive and mounted and I want to copy DOS files to CPM or we're going to copy from C colon slash learn Oops. to that drive those have been transferred grab another floppy here I think this one actually has content on it we'll find out Nope, another blank floppy. Well, let's go ahead and copy again files from C colon and we'll transfer these files to that floppy and at this point we should have three KPRO1 single-sided double density floppies with uh, the CPM boot on them and a set of files and of course the next step here when I'm done with this will be to set up the Capro one again and see if this actually worked you know all indications here are this is working which is nice maybe this is the disk from my testing earlier Yeah, that's the disk from testing earlier. So I wonder if I can erase erase CPM files. If you specify a diskette drive, user number is optional. It will override the selected CPM drive. Well, we'll see what this does. Yeah, it's accessing the floppy. So that's nice. I'll be able to. Uh, delete files and that should now be an empty disk anyhow handy little utility uh, I used it several years ago on a different CPM project I don't know what like oh I bet the CDD is is uh, CPM to DOS, DOS to CPM, CPM format. Didn't actually try to format a, a disk. Let's go ahead and just do a format just to see what that works like. So format a CPM disk, option five, write B and hit G to begin. So we know we use Teledisk to format CPM floppies that worked with the KPRO 2 so I'm assuming this would work as well. Handy utility uh, between Teledisk to deal with the TD0 floppy images uh, and, and 22 disk to be able to copy individual files back and forth I think this creates a pretty solid set for getting content to or from KPRO floppies So with that done, I will uh, stop this segment here, and I'll be back soon. So we've got the Capro 2 set up here. It's waiting for boot media be able to start CPM here. CPM has started. I wonder if I need to bring that intensity down a little bit. Haven't noticed the raster. Uh, on the back of the screen before. Hopefully that's not overwashed too much on camera. So we've managed to boot from the uh, image we found with 22 disk. Now let's take a look at these floppies. We just used 22 disk to transfer files onto and see what we've got. If anything, hopefully this worked. And it did. So there is the set of diagnostic files 
That should be a bootable disc. There's an auto, uh, it's like auto on, auto off on it. So let's go ahead and move that up to the A drive and restart and see what we get. Save one, B save that one. I have no idea what that is or why that's there in the auto start. Maybe it's trying to create a test file. You're as, uh, as much in the know as I am. Save a number of times, so it's, this is just actually a, a test suite being run. So it's reading files from A and writing to B, and then cleaning up. I guess we'll just let this run. Natatrant, erase those files. Yep, it just cleaned up. This looks to be just looping. So we'll see if we can stop this. Let's say Control C. Warm booted, which means it's probably going to run the auto again. Um, so I hit Control C, multiply. Them. So okay, it didn't pick up the auto. So what else is on here? So we saw it do some basic disk tests. I'm sure, there's some junk files potentially sitting on the B drive. No, okay, that was the, a blank floppy from before. So we have a line.com, which I believe is probably going to be for disk alignment. Oh, CRT adjustment. So that's nice. I don't know why the floppy read lights are sequencing. Let's see if I can get out of this. Oh, it, it's uh. It's not spinning up the motors, however. I'm not sure. I don't hear the headload solenoids happening. Well, that obviously... I should have turned auto off on this floppy. I saw the batch file to do that. Ah, it stayed off. But let's go ahead and turn auto off just so it stays off. So that's for aligning, uh, obviously the monitor, c.com, well, we'll just step through these and see what they do. Double density diskette copy verify utility, so this is just an old or another version of copy, d.com. Is, is wide directory. DU is probably the disk utility we've seen before. Well, it's not. Ah, so this gives us control to step in and out the drive. Print disk parameters for current drive. Search for. Yeah, I heard it step. So we'll quit. No, I don't 
see a way to get out of this. <clears throat> we will just restart. So a disk utility like that can be useful for getting the heads to like an alignment track. Uh, if you've got an align alignment diskette, which I do have, and maybe we'll do a video on aligning floppy drives at some point. So F is yet another. And this one's got a verify utility on it. To say not finding a whole lot of exciting stuff here. And this disk will this will well, we don't want to do that. It looks like it's going to Modify floppy contents. Oh, that's interesting. It has both drive lights on at the same time. Hopefully, I didn't just trash a disk. No, nope, it's. Let me cycle the power. Interesting. What has it done here? the power off for a bit, let the logic board completely reset. Hard reset here. Uh, your guess is as good as mine at this point. That is not normal. Yeah, let me let it sit for 10 or 15 seconds. That's actually a really interesting that it's coming back and trying to select both drives. Hopefully I didn't just damage something, which would be really weird. Honestly, not sure how it's may have just uh, trashed both of my discs. Let me pull these out. I'll put my regular boot media in. Yeah, I think I managed to trash both of these floppies. got the contents on it. No idea why that was so unhappy. Did you read me on here? So I'm using Control S and Control Q here on the keyboard to uh, stop the scrolling and start it. Uh, it can be really handy. So on the so test our series of submit files to save and erase five files to check whether test M runs two memory tests: test low and test high. Test low. I believe the command submit test m dot sub. B dos error on a. Yeah, 
Yeah, this disc is no longer bootable. Yeah, it definitely did something. That one test was destructive on that floppy. Let's see if we can get it to boot here. I believe I can use move CPM. Uh, I've done this forever to actually move CPM back over to that other floppy. Or maybe not. Been a long time, don't remember how to do it anyhow. Uh, I guess we'll just go to drive B and see if we can run the submit file directly from drive B. There's a test low. Is there a test high? Yeah, not a test low. Let's just run an army test directly. Test high. I'm going to assume, yeah, this is just sitting here cycling on memory test. I'm just going to do an AA55 pattern. So yeah, this, this will just sit here and test memory and just loop over and over and over. So that can be useful. Uh, I don't know what the output would look like on a failure. close the door on B. So let me pull these discs out. And a couple of these others here should be bootable. On one of these is the learning package and on the other one it was the uh, ship test package. Diag 1, that is Not what I was expecting to see. Uh, Diag one is for the the uh, K Pro one. So here's that learning disk. So let's go ahead and run read. And it didn't like something. Read. Okay, pro dot LRN. Learning to use your KPRO CPM operating system. So it's just a uh, series of text files with instructions on CPM. read cpm dot learn. So those like to me these are just text files. CPM primer. CPM was written long ago as computer history goes in the early 1970s. Well anyhow there's that little learning thing which is interesting. I'm going to assume this last floppy in the stack here is that ship test floppy. Read write test, test, test zero. I'm going to assume CRT is that CRT alignment utility again. Did any printable character to fill it with that character hit control C when you were done? So we can fill the screen with characters. All right, that's kind of nice for testing a video RAM. Memory. It's obviously going to be a memory test of some kind. 
memory and CPU tests for KPRO 2.4.10, test RAM. I'll put the CRT requires BIOS Vector Plus 9. Start the machine. Which Capro diagnostic menu? Capro drive. Test at older Capro two or four. Test A, new, test B. See, and I don't know which variant that this is. But I don't want to run a floppy test here. And screw this media up as well. Anyhow, we successfully transferred files to KPRO2 CPM disks using 22 disk on my MS-DOS image machine. Uh, I think we've been pretty successful here overall uh, in bringing this all together. So, uh, hope this little demo helped, uh, and we'll talk soon.